No one in my family did anything tech related, honestly. I just kind of saw like robotic and that, that's really what got me into programming as a whole was just robotics. And I got into the club in middle school. I didn't actually do really any of the coding and stuff. I just kind of had fun playing around, like helping set up all the test fields and running the robot. And then once I got to high school, I actually decided, okay, I'm gonna actually do robotics and actually try to learn how to, you know, do the more technical things like coding and maybe some of the wiring and stuff, which is what I ended up doing. Uh, I just had a lot of fun with that. There were some times when I was younger when I was scared of going into something I liked and then getting sick of it, right? Yeah. You know, you spend too much time doing that thing that you've loved and now it's like, wow, now it's a job and it's not as fulfilling anymore. Mm. Uh, I don't have that issue with programming though, just because, you know, it's kind of secondary to like math in a way, even though I still do find it pretty enjoyable and I like the work. Okay, thank you, man. You know, I really appreciate you coming here. Um, just for like people watching, can you give like an intro of like who you are and what you currently do? Yeah, my name is Jay Sean. I'm currently a software engineer at Microsoft. I work a lot in the cloud division there. Yeah, mostly work on cloud servers, a lot of low level firmware type of stuff. And mm -hmm. uh, went to school in New York for my college, Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. And before that, I lived in Atlanta where I did, you know, most of my high school and uh, elementary. So you studied in college computer science and anything else or just only computer science? Applied math. So uh -huh. I took like especially my first two years I took a lot of applied math classes. I like I think I took multivariate my first semester mm -hmm. along with DiffEQ and then I just started taking like advanced calculus, yeah. uh, an imaginary numbers calculus kind of class. I feel very underqualified right now. <laughs> <laughs> and then I did a bunch of stuff like partial differential equations. I took linear algebra, methods of applied math. There's a lot of cool stuff out there. Yeah. Does it ever come up in your work or? Oh, well, along with the applied math classes, I also took a lot of like computational classes. So yeah. tons of optimization. Yeah. Linear algebra is so, so big in computer science in general. Yeah. I took machine learning classes. It's like probability and machine learning or probability and linear algebra just completely carry machine learning. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, you see what AI is doing nowadays. Uh -huh. <laughs> Math is extremely important. important. Yes, exactly. Ma maybe not to every type of software engineering you'll do. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, I don't really use a lot of math currently for my job since it's more, you know, firmware server related, low level kind of coding. But I, I think it does help to have some understanding of math because it can come in handy when trying to like optimize certain problems or just trying to have a fundamental understanding of why a problem exists or how your solution works. Because at the end of the day, uh, a lot of coding is literally just logic and math. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you ever get to that point in college where you're looking at finite state machines and stuff, you, you can see some clear links there. So uh, on the topic of like your classes, do you have like any favorite classes in college that you really felt like helped you a lot or just like really interested you? For computer science, I would say a very useful class I took would be Principles of Software. It teaches you a lot about how to structure your programs to make your code readable. It teaches you how to do things like refactor your code, uh, best practices for setting up things like, do you want to abstract out certain classes to make sure it's easy for someone else to come later yeah. and modify those things or something that's easy to expand upon? Because I, I would say that's a, that's a very big part of software engineering is uh, the technical debt that gets built up because some things aren't designed in a very good way yeah. and later down the line you may need to overhaul something or apply a weird band-aid fix that doesn't fit very well yeah. with the rest of the system and it can get very complicated. So it's always very good to have clean code that, that you have a very good structure for and is readable and I think that class is, it, it, the concepts from that class have come up probably more than any other class. Like just w without it being, you know, like actual coding itself, but just thinking about code and how you want to work with people with code, those things are very, very relevant in a business. Anything else in college that you found was like just super challenging or even like maybe in that phase of college, it might not be like a class, but just something else that was challenging? Uh, I would say the two times I probably struggled the most in college was taking data structures, which is like the first real computer science class. Yeah. Like the first one you take is computer science one, which is just Python. And then data structures is in C++. And if you don't know C++, you have to learn it as the class <laughs> is going on and the homeworks do not, they don't even start easy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's a gatekeeper class. Yeah. People who want to transfer into the major have to get a certain grade in that class to even uh, be valid for it. And I knew people who straight up could not pass that class for years. 
Uh, it's a tough class, it weeds people out very easily. Uh, but I think that is a very important class. It teaches you uh, a lot of amazing fundamental things about computer science, a lot of data structures, you know, very important algorithms, you know, before you actually get to like a big boy algorithms class. Yeah. Maybe you can just talk about like how you approach like just the job search or stuff like that. I guess the internship probably is the first part of that or? I would say my internships had a very large part on me getting jobs going forward because it all started my freshman year. I was on the e-board. I, I got put on the e-board for a club the second semester because I was friends with some senior who graduated in December and they were like, hey, you should take my spot. Yeah. <laughs> so I took their spot on the e-board and then someone from the physics department came to our e-board saying, hey, we're looking for people to work with us over the summer, like coding and whatnot, math, physics. Yeah. And I was just like, hold on, I know math. I know, know I know how to code a little bit. I've, I'm uh -huh. now you know, a whole year in just about. I have one year of scratch. <laughs> <laughs> I got one year of scratch under my belt and I, I applied. I ended up getting the, the stipend. It was like a couple thousand dollars, but they paid for my housing and stuff and I stayed at the school over the summer. Got it. You know, so I was like, oh cool. I didn't, have, I didn't think I was gonna get anything over the summer. I was gonna just go home. Yeah. But then I got that and the project itself is called Milky Way at Home. Basically, it is a physics computation simulation project where they are just constantly calculating, trying to find dark matter. But that specific project that I worked on is what pretty much got me the rest of my internships because once, I, once people saw that and they're like, you were doing what with particles and space and yeah. stuff? And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty cool, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> so, so that kind of like project. set the motion for like, okay, you have this project under your belt. It'll let you get the next internship, which was... Probably the most notable internship I have with J.P. Morgan Chase. Hmm. Uh, got to work there for a summer. And I actually mostly worked with sort of data engineering and data handling and stuff. Uh, our team was split in three parts. And there were two other interns on my team. So, and we, we handled like a whole pipeline essentially. So getting the data, massaging the data, yeah. doing some light analysis and then presenting it for a couple partners at the end of the summer. Anything notable in your internships that you found like also like very difficult or hard and were able to get past or? Is trying to learn these things in the time you have. Cause internships yeah. are not long. They're like eight to 16 weeks maximum. And 16 weeks is on the longer end, I'll say for most internships. So trying to pick up a language you have never used before or ever seen before, and then trying to be even the smallest amount of useful to a team of adults who have already been doing this for at least a year on their team, yeah. it, it can be a little daunting, but as long as your team is willing to help you and guide you in the right spots and actually pick a project with appropriate scope, uh, then it can be it, it can be very manageable. And so sometimes I, I definitely did like try to like look at some code outside of work to get a better grasp. Like Swift, I was just like, oh, I have no idea how I need to define these things. I don't even know how I want to handle yeah. certain issues. I need to know, do they have an equivalent of a function or some default uh, state like these other languages do that I can, you know, like use my past knowledge to keep yeah. in this language? How did you guys prepare for the interview for like these kind of companies? Travel across the country a couple times to go to these, to other large career fairs hmm. and just, Doing that for a couple of years just gave me a lot of experience and confidence that I knew what I had to do during the interviews. I already knew what I wanted to say and how I wanted to present what I was going to do. And it, all, it all comes down to experience and you, you want to be able to do that before it's time for you to really go get a job because you will not be comfortable in those positions. Even if you don't get those internships early, I think it is best to try to apply yeah. to as many places as you can, like within reason, and to do those interviews. Yeah. And to, you know, just keep your mind sharp, just know what you want to say, and as, as you do more and more of them, obviously you get more comfortable. Mm -hmm. Anything more on like the technical side for like preparing for these interviews? Like did you grind leak code? Did you approach like, I don't know, like reading certain books? Were you just innately already good at like algorithms from like your, data structures and algorithms class? Oh, no, I definitely was not just naturally good at <laughs> algorithms. Yeah. Um, so I definitely did use a lot of stuff. I did do like, you know, casual leak code. I didn't pay for leak code yeah. or get like the advanced questions, but I tried to do, you know, a, but like yeah. try a bunch of the different open ones, be like, okay, 
I can at least solve some simple dynamic programming. I can yeah. do like, there are a couple staple types of interview questions that a lot of companies will use. And if you can get yourself familiar with those, it'll greatly increase your chances. Anytime you're doing an interview, it's not always the end goal to be able to give the exact solution. As long as you're familiar with those type of problems and the fundamentals about them and can explain your reasoning of how you're trying to approach an end solution uh, and try to get the interview to like walk through it with you, maybe give you hints sometimes because Interview, interviewers will do that a lot. They really want to see that you understand the problem and can work it out. It's not always about just, oh, I remember this exact formula. I know how to set this up for this problem every time. They want to know that you know what you're doing because you know problems in the real world in the real world are not as clean. You're always going to have to improvise in some way or adapt something to fit a system that you have never seen before. So it's always good to just get an understanding and know the steps you need to take and always talk those things out. Make sure your thoughts are always heard because if you're not saying anything, the interviewer has no idea what you're thinking, what you're, like where you're trying to go with this problem, if you're on the right track. And you know, if you're talking and you say something a little off, maybe they'll, they'll nudge you in the right direction and the, yeah. interviewer, and the interview will go a little smoother than you thought it would.